Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you something a little th different today. It's called uh, Country Road. I think it's like a 7x7, seven seven, uh, well, 7 inch uh, circle, you could say, because it's not one by the other when it's a circle, is it? Um, the scene itself is, uh, something I painted way, uh, I painted the scene way back in, um, oh, I want to say 2012 or so, and it was a successful painting. It's got a lot to offer the scene, and I'll maybe talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, I, it's maybe the only, the second ever circle painting I did. They have a, um, a thing here where I uh, have my studio at the uh, Cory Art Center, Bongaree, Northland, New Zealand. Uh, every year they have like a charitable thing where every, uh, not uh, a lot of artists uh, create uh, plates. Most of those are on ceramic. And uh, although I don't like working on the ceramic plates, but I won't bore you with that. Um, and then they auction them off and uh, the money goes to the Cory Art Center to uh, just help support all of its needs. I did a little bit way early on. I've been there for since 2011. Uh, I did a, a landscape on a plate and it was quite successful, but uh, it just wasn't, wasn't working out for me. Um, yeah. Uh, so um, this, this circle really worked out great. I'm super thrilled with the way it turned out. I really felt inspired by the whole circleness of it. So you can see there's kind of a flow running through the um, entire design. Now I am painting with a modified burnt umber. It's modified with perylene black. And um, that gives me a nice underpainting. Uh, from there I went in with color. And uh, now in the members area, and maybe you know about it, maybe you don't, there's a, a, a members area a portion of this channel. For six bucks, you have access to, uh, it's got to be well over a hundred something, 200, I don't know, a lot, uh, full length uh, videos. Like, so the painting, uh, all the painting sessions together for this come out to about three and a half hours. So you would be able to see that 4K, no ads. And uh, you're in there in the, with me in the trenches. So. That always includes a, um, a color mixing session. And also, very importantly, because this ties into what I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about today, um, access to the, uh, the reference image that I'm using. Now, I don't just, I don't particularly care to share that most of the time, um, mostly because people kind of latch on to it. I, I really, it's, for me, it's all about the painting. So, um, but uh, if you dig around this channel, you're going to find some of these uh, members area type videos that I release to everyone. Because every now and again, uh, I put one out just to, uh, you know, promote the um, special service that's provided in that aspect of the channel. Um, <clears throat> the, one of the reasons I think this turned out really well, first of all, the, the reference is really killer, very flexible. And... Uh, two, I just uh, felt inspired with a kind of playfulness. Also, I uh, very much embraced my sort of strokey style, kind of a sub-style. You can see me bring that into paintings all the time. You basically, uh, if you're watching, I'll do like one, two, three little strokes. I have a background in illustration and working with brush and ink, pen and ink. Um, so that's maybe a bit of a carryover from that. Um, but this painting almost took on kind of a Van Gogh-ish kind of uh, quality in a sense. And uh, that ain't a bad thing since he's, you know, one of the best guys ever. I wouldn't call him any kind of tonalist or anything, um, but uh, I, I'm a big fan, big fan. Um, and I don't often set out to paint that way. Um, and this is quite an organic sort of rising up of that uh, and I wouldn't say by any means that it looks like one of his works but definitely one one thinks of that I think yeah so what I want to get into with references like and I brought this up before lots of times in the channel because hey I was watching a really good channel 
Uh, this guy is a plein air painter, and the cool thing about plein air, you know, um, is you've got, uh, you don't have as many of the um, problems that photography gives you, like the focal length uh, problem. Uh, you're automatically going to subsume detail because of uh, the amount of time that you usually have before the light shifts. Um, it's a lot, there's a lot to offer um, in plein air painting. I myself, it, it's just, weather out here is just too changeable, and um, I, uh, let's just face it, I, I run to the control that you have in the studio. Um, but, it, it, with plein air, uh, you can definitely, one of the big downsides is things can take on a real samey quality. A lot of plein air paintings have that kind of samey plein air feel. I'm not dissing anyone, I'm not naming names, I'm just saying I've noticed it, you know. And I don't know why that is. Uh, I, I suspect I see a lot of that also with like watercolor, modern watercolor anyway. Like, it's like watercolor work from the 1800s and early 1900s. That doesn't seem to be a problem. But my theory there is that because uh, of this, uh, I'm going to use the white of the paper as my white. I think that uh, imposes that that restriction imposes a kind of sameness on a lot of different uh, watercolors work and that's it a lot of the watercolor work is awesome i'm not saying that it's not that's not where i'm coming from hey there's an ad for my book coming up what do you know we shipped a lot of books this week and i'm so happy about that because i worked so hard on it the book costs 60 dollars us now that's a bit high i know but uh, the reason for that is I've included international shipping, so you don't have to worry about it. And it's really exorbitant from uh, out here in uh, New Zealand. But um, I think you'll love the book. Uh, I put a lot of work into it. And like all of these things that I talk about on the channel, not all of them, but a lot of them are in that book. And it's all in one handy, easy to reference uh, resource. So check that out if you're interested. Um, so the... <clears throat> Let's get into the meat of what I want to talk about the uh, with the reference. Also, last week I took a little trip up north and took a lot of um, pretty good reference pictures. Okay, so it's been a while since I've been able to do that. The Kova and all that um, really kind of messed with that, but uh, it was good to get out in nature and uh, you know um, interface with it in that way. And now, when you come across a scene in nature that you think might make a good painting, whether you're a plein air um, painter or in my case, I'm capturing it with a, a good quality camera. Um, not everything about that scene is going to work. That's very, very rare. It can happen. It, it's not impossible, but it's very rare. Things need to be modified, moved around. Um, uh, extraneous details need to be removed. But the, the most important aspect of any image is the uh, structural composition of the scene, where the trees are, where a road or stream is, or a path, or um, whatever's uh, in the foreground. Uh, and honestly, just as a little aside, you, you tend to want something like that going on. Um, scenes where the foreground's just this big strip of grass or something, that doesn't tend to work very well. And there are strategies for dealing with that, which I brought up before on the channel. Now if I got more time, uh, if I have time at the end of this video, I'll, I'll get into some of that for you too. But um, so you take your photo, you get home, you you you, you bring it up, you go, hmm, wow, that sure looked better <laughs> in real life. Uh, one thing I noticed actually, the focal length issue is not present if you're a plein air painter. So, um, and that by that I mean like distant objects get very much smaller. Um, with the wide angle lenses and you're going to use that wide angle because you want to get the whole scene in okay so there are some strategies for dealing with that you can take panoramic shots but trust me once you get home the computer you'll forget that it's actually a series of panoramic shots uh, I'm, I was looking at some of the ones I took and I go uh, which ones are the panoramic ah well whatever you know I grab a few and I start running uh, my real point is, and I, uh, the first place I was introduced to this idea was from uh, Stapleton Currents. He has an excellent blog. Uh, just type in Stapleton Currents blog. You won't regret it, yeah, especially if you're a painter just starting out. 
Um, I don't know if he keeps it up anymore, but there was a period of about two years where he worked, wrote it every day, and his goal was to talk about absolutely everything he knew about painting. I was lucky enough to come across his blog when I was first starting out, and I'm always happy to put people onto it. Um, I, I like his work. I'm not a huge fan, but that's sort of beside the point, because the act of painting is the act of painting, and the things that need to be right are the things that need to be right. Now, in Stapleton's case, he won't use photography at all, and probably because of a lot of these inherent issues uh, that I've talked about. Um, but the main thing that you need to remember and that he communicated to me is that you have to design your picture, whether you're in nature working as a plein air painter or whether you've taken, uh, you've captured the image as a sketch or a photo and you're taking it into your studio. And when you're a painter just starting out, it's it's hard, you know, because you are uh, pulling things uh, that you see from the photo and putting them into your painting. Um, and because you're kind of starting out, you don't always know what should be in and what should be left. Um, one good trick I can tell you right now is if you're using a computer screen or something like that or an iPad, um, take that reference image and really shrink it down to nearly icon size so that just like you would see your painting as a uh, when it was photographed as a little icon you can see a lot of compositional problems right then and there so when things are larger um, we tend to kind of move through the image a little differently but that'll that is really a big tip for you another great tip is reverse the image um, or look at it if you have like a printout of it that you're painting from or look at it in a mirror a lot of issues or problems will become very apparent. The thing is like we're always like talking to ourselves as we look at these reference images and uh, not not like really talking to yourself but you, you're having a dialogue about things. Uh, I know I do um, and that's one of the reasons why in the members area I think it's one of the best things that I share is an initial usually it's maybe a minute to five minutes where I have a reference image up and I'm saying I'm going to change this, I got a problem with that, etc. so on and so forth. And um, someday on the channel, I may, uh, if I could ever actually go live, it would be great. Um, I would love to, to, to go over people's paintings and reference images and, and show them what, where the traps were, where the problems were, that, um, you know, but uh, you know, that's not going to help you when you're in the uh, trenches and you're trying to make something happen, trying to make it work. Oh, you got real time now, real time. Um, that's not going to help you even a little bit. So you go, oh, well, what am I supposed to do? Well, you're supposed to do, do a lot of paintings. That's what you need to do. You got to get in there and, uh, and basically break those eggs and bake that cake. Uh, the, the thing is like you you want to get better at painting that's the way to do it it's the only the only real real way um, if you uh, were to do a small small painting every every night every day um, say a five by seven or four by six or something like that you go oh that's very small I don't want to do that kind of work blah 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 that's not the point the point is that's how you get better if you did 30 paintings a month instead of slaving away every night on this giant uh, supposed masterpiece that's the third painting you ever did I think gonna work it isn't gonna be very good I mean maybe you'll get lucky maybe you're amazing you know but uh, and there are amazing artists out there and that is possible but are you gonna be able to follow up that third piece with a fourth piece that's amazing you know what I'm saying you got to get in there and get your get your hands dirty break the eggs make that cake anyway that's it for this video thank you for joining me today I really appreciate you coming around please leave me a comment um, if you can like the video um, you can send me a donation that might if you get some value let's let's exchange some energy I really appreciate that also this painting will be for sale in my store on my site go buy it it's really cool uh, until I come back with another video for your edification and enjoyment, do me a favor, do me a solid. Take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Stay out of trouble, and God bless you and your family.